All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Ollie Wood, who is all the way across the world in New Zealand, in Wellington, New Zealand. How are you doing, Ollie? Yeah, great. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And Ali is uh, Ali is from the Meta Project, and you're the head coach, you're a nutrition nutritionist, and exercise specialist. And what we're going to talk about today is health, performance, and energy. Um, so, um, Ali, let's let's baseline it a bit. I, I think obviously during the pandemic, I think a lot of people have gone one of two ways, right? They've even they've either taken more of an interest in their health and well-being and fitness and all of that, or they've kind of taken more of an interest in Netflix and kind of thrown the, thrown the rest of it out the window. Um, what you, so when you look at people now or people maybe who haven't, uh, who've taken the latter, the Netflix route, uh, what is it that they are missing out on in, in, that other people who are focusing on, on, on health and, and, and fitness, what are, they, what are they missing out on? Yeah, it's a really great start, John. I think the, the awareness there is through lockdowns and this uh, whole pandemic, the uh, health awareness has risen for everyone. I think there's just a certain population that's chosen to ignore it. And I think there's an awareness of how inextricably linked that mental and physical health is, right? Because we've seen how much if they aren't taking care of that immune system of that health base, then it's really starting to show through on the mental health as well. So I think at some level, the, the awareness is really built overall, but uh, it's really the decision on whether we, we choose to act on it. Yeah. And I think uh, to your point is uh, the, the mind body connection. I think, I mean, it's very hard nowadays to ignore that piece, but we still live in, but we still live in a world where those are kind of still divided. I mean, you go to one person for your, um, for your health, uh, you know, your physical health, and you go to another person for your mental health or whatever, but the bringing the two of them together, um, that, that still seems to be a little bit divided, a little bit disjointed. It really, really does. And especially down here in New Zealand, Australia, uh, you know, we're leading an area we shouldn't be, which is men's mental health, right? And really taking that conversation to a new level uh, is something that I've uh, really been uh, ha so, uh, you know, privileged to be a part of because what we're, what we're able to do is channel their mental health through that physical pursuit, right? And taking that time to realize when we elevate their energy, we get their digestion right, we lower that inflammation, mark, those inflammation markers across the board, uh, we start to see a massive increase in their mood, the energy, all these other aspects that come through. Uh, we just had a mindset call with our uh, private clients last night, which we do every Monday. It's one of our uh, cornerstones in our program, which just gets more and more popular. Uh, but one of the big things that was shared a lot there was, oh yeah, I've dropped like six kilos or 10 kilos, but my energy and my mood and all the stuff that I really emphasize is so much more important than the the six kilos or whatever they lost, right? So that conversation and the uh, the involve the evolving conversation that happens when you start to bring the awareness to how that human body really works, I think, is uh, really important. Yeah. So can you explain to people a little bit more about about that, about how the benefits are? That it's not just as you said, it's not just about you know losing a few pounds, getting yourself a little bit in in shape, but all the other components that come together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the biggest thing I'm always talking about is, is it's never just weight, right? It's never just that we need to drop six kilos. It's, it's how we show up at work. It's how we feel in our own skin. It's how we are able to do the things we want to do with our body, without our body holding us back. Those are the biggest levers that uh, we want to make sure people are showing up uh, the way that, you know, at their best. And I think the awareness around that is, and the shift we're trying to make from this diet mentality is rather than breaking the body down, we're building it back up. Okay. So it's never about nutrition as such, right? It's looking at how the body interacts with that nutrition and those other things that come into play. So the biggest conversation there is how do we build that body back up and shift your perspective around fueling the body rather than starving it so that we can actually look at what you're actually working towards achieving rather than just the, the meaningless five kilos. Yeah. So how do you how do you help people? Because it's it's always for a lot of people, it's the first step that's the hardest. Or maybe some people feel like, well, I'm too far gone or this is too much for me or it's going to be too hard and I'm not going to be able to sustain it. Uh, how do you help those folks? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this internal uh, story is something that uh, needs to be addressed right off the bat, right? Because when we look at this uh, culture that's being built inside the fitness industry is we need to chuck in a boot camp, we need to halve our calories, we need to eat, eat our, our two almonds and our one lettuce leaf <laughs> to drop body weight. We need to get in a way of 
uh, how to get our body back in our sight, right? And if uh, one of the biggest things I learned from being a personal trainer for seven years before we even involved into what is now the Meta Project was I was uh, true and true a exercise specialist, right? How do I maximize the way you move, get that programming just on point a, a, in a way that builds you through. But the, tra- the trouble was when you're working with these high functioning humans, there's so much stress, there's so much inflammation, there's so much holding them back from them actually responding, recovering from training in the first place. So looking at this and shifting the conversation to how do we get your body back on your side by building you up, getting rid of that toxicity, that those inflammatory markers that are really making it challenging for you to simply wake up in the morning. You know, there's two, if you need two coffees to function in the morning, here's your first warning light, right? How do we make those shifts to get that body working again and then any sort of training that you're already doing you're going to get more out of it right so the shift is not work harder and you know flog a bit dead animal it's trying to take that mm-hmm. time to build that body back up and have a base to work with so you know it's a conversation we have on a lot of our first calls right people were like i need to wait until this work project's over i need to wait till the perfect week i'm like great if you have the perfect week what happens when something comes up and it will come up mm-hmm. so taking that time to simplify where you start and find those first steps is really helpful yeah, no, it's always interesting. It's it's that it's that old adage, isn't it? Uh, that old saying is when's the best time to plant a tree? It's twenty years ago, and the second best time is right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, there's, so there's never a perfect moment to start these things, and I do think that's what holds people back a lot. Is we're fantastic at procrastination. We're fantastic at coming up with reasons why we can't start. Like, oh, I'll fix my life next week, Ollie. You know, I just this week just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, and then something else it'll, will come up next week. And I guess the other part is, so it's difficult for people to start this process sometimes. And then, uh, and then let's face it, I mean, there's often, there's often a sort of a motivation dip at some stage. So how do you, how do you help people not just start, but actually sustain and and overcome those moments when they're like, oh, this isn't working or it's too hard or I just don't feel like it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's two parts to that, that we really uh, anchor for most people. And the first part is simply that, uh, conversation of self-love which is simply showing up for us right and I think as you said there's the work meeting there's the the family obligations there's all of this stuff that we fit into our day and we think about ourselves last so taking that time to fit us back in the day the way we talk about it is you know that first 20 minutes of the day if we have something for us in the morning it's very hard to stuff up the rest right so taking that time to build up a base and find a way to just anchor in time for us has to be a, a, an act of self-love right that that act of self-respect if you want to call it that right an awareness of just blocking us in the day like it's a work meeting, like it's an interview, whatever it might be, and putting that same amount of importance on it, right? One of the big shifts we've made, uh, obviously, we're fully online. We help our clients around the world get them in the, you know, whether that's in the gym, whether it's making those shifts with the nutrition, we don't have someone at the gym telling them what to do. And that is a massive asset because one of the biggest uh, struggles that I had personally with personal training was, okay, I trained someone three days a week. They trained because I was there and I'd tell them to be there. <laughs> and then as soon as we stopped training together, they stopped training, right? What skill set have we learned there? Nothing, right? So there's no value actually built long-term to make sure that I can anchor in time for myself. So I think that skill set and that awareness to put time aside for us and really respect that time so we can show up better for others is a massive place to start. Now, the second part that you've dived into is this awareness of motivation, right? And we're in a motivation crazy world trying to find that externally. Whereas one of the big shifts we're trying to make here is rather than motivation to create action, we're trying to create the action to create the motivation, right? The long-term drive. How do we look at If you just take that first step out the door, right, you take that small step to uh, go towards the fridge around the pantry, you're making those small shifts towards a better option, right? And that's the hardest part of that decision to make. So as soon as we make those small steps to just anchor in time, create some level of action, we feel so much better. So whether that be, you know, the night routine, which allows us to wake up better, whether that be just putting our shoes next to our bed so we're straight out the door, whether that be that time to uh, sit and breathe and just take five seconds to inhale in a way that we're learning how our body's actually feeling in the morning, those are all actions that allow to create long-term drive rather than a a short-term fleeting motivation. Yeah, no, great points. Uh, And just coming back on on the first one you said there, you're about giving yourself time and um, you know, the act of self-respect and maybe self-reflection. It's so, it's so hard because uh, we live in this, we live in this world where like taking time out for yourself is almost, 
it's almost frowned upon because you have devices interrupting you, you have social media, you have all of these things. And we filled our world with all of these distractions. As I say to people all the time, when they tell me, oh, I'm the busiest I've ever been in my life, I always say, are you or are you just the most distracted you've ever been? Because I bet you it's the latter. Uh, yeah. So that's that's one of the first things you have to do is really take a step back and, and sort of say, am I going to stay on this hamster wheel or am I going to step off occasionally so that I can take care of myself? Absolutely. And what you're starting to look at is this whole leg and lag indicators, right? You're taking the time to really anchor in the process rather than the end destination. Uh, and, you know, nothing shows us more than sales because what we need to do is make sure we're actually protecting our energy to show that we show up better, right? If we just focus on the numbers and we burn ourselves out from both ends, we've got nothing left to give, right? Whether it's that, that ability to show up consistently is going to be the biggest asset to you moving forward. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And, and, and the thing is, it's become even more important because you think about it, too, is because we're operating in, in a virtual world in many ways as well. And even stakes for salespeople who are used to jumping on planes and running around the, yeah. uh, the world, maybe they haven't been doing that anymore. And maybe that kind of adrenaline rush or that kind of lifestyle kind of suited them in some ways. And now they have a more, if you like, sedentary lifestyle because a lot of things are virtual they've gone backwards and maybe that's why some of them are struggling with selling online because they can't create that same kind of level of energy. Yeah, absolutely. And you've just, you put the nail on the head before where you said uh, it's, it's not more busy, it's just more distracted. And I think the fact is people are so busy being busy that they're not taking that time to really look inward and take that time to build a level of internal strength, a level of internal direction. They're reliant on that external, uh, this is where you need to be at this time. And uh, that's really funny, right? We get to the, a point, uh, or sad, which way, depending on which way you look at it, when we look at these high-level executives, high-level salespeople that are, are told where to go and where it needs to be, and there's this massive chaos and rush going on, that when you actually tell them to sit down and be comfortable with who they are as a human or how do they feel by themselves, that's a real deep conversation that, that uh, needs to be addressed. And, and you know, long-term, it's going slow to go fast. If you're able to anchor that space, you're able to create a morning routine, you're able to be self-directed, you're going to get so much more out each day. Yeah, and it's a fascinating point, and probably there's a great study in there somewhere, but I think that's probably where a lot of salespeople have come a little unstuck when they've been forced into a virtual world, because in some ways, uh, every, all the extraneous things are stripped away, and maybe you're sitting like we are on a Zoom call with the camera. It's it's pretty it's it's pretty intimate in its own way. You know, there's not all the distractions around it. And I think some people have, as you said, have have struggled with that because they haven't they've never had the time to center themselves. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you mentioned there was about motivation, and this is this is one that I always find fascinating because uh, we often talk about, oh, we need to motivate our team and we need to motivate people and we need to do all this. But at the end of the day, how much can you really motivate people? It has to come from themselves. You can certainly guide them, give them the you know the, the guidance or whatever. But at the same time, real motivation, as you said earlier, it has to come from something yourself. You have to find some way of of, of harnessing that. You have to take the time to build those uh, those standards, right? And you have to be very transparent in how you project those. So it comes down to that first conversation. This is how we do things and this is what we expect. We're not a family, we're a team, right? If you're not performing, you're out. And taking that time to build that is something we've built, you transparently built inside of our business uh, time and time again and made sure that, uh, you know, we've got a team of 11 now. We've gone through 20 to find that 11, you know, and trying to find right. that, that space to create uh, this is how we do things and this is what we expect. Uh, and very much so, the only way you're going to be an effective coach, an effective closer, an effective whatever you are on the team is being able to really live what you're teaching, right? Taking that time to be part of the program. Uh, I loved how, uh, again, last night we had uh, our closers call at, with our three sales guys and one of our new guys uh, coming on board and getting an awareness of how we roll. One of the guys, before we dove into it, anything is like, have you started the program yet? If you haven't started the program yet, none of these sales tech is going to make any difference because you're not convicted by how great we are, right? And taking that time to really build an awareness of this is the movement we're trying to make, the change we're doing in the world. Uh, and our, our top two sales guys are 100% involved in the program. And there's not too much else I need to talk about, right? Because they're just, they're checking the wins. They're going through testimonials. They're, they're seeing how much we're changing lives. And that's all they need to get on the phone and be like, if you want to be a part of this, it's one of the best decisions you can make. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a critical point there that you just made. I just want to underline it is at the end of the day, you have to find something that you believe in and uh, in order to be able to convince other people because you should be living it. It should come out of you. And as you said, I mean, you don't you don't need external motivation if you really believe in what you're doing. You, you will have your own uh, 
internal motivation. And I think that's probably a good thing for people to start looking at, looking at maybe first and foremost is like, why am I in the job I'm in? Why am I doing what I'm doing? If you're in sales, like, why am I selling what I'm selling? Yeah. Do I, do I believe it? Do I really think it helps people change, you know, makes a change or whatever. And, and if it doesn't, if I don't believe that, then perhaps I need to go find something I I, I do believe in because otherwise I will never come across as authentic. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so, and so what, what other pieces of advice would you give to people who maybe are feeling that they're a little bit stuck, that they're in a rut right now and they, they need to make some kind of change, or maybe they used to be, you know, maybe even pre-pandemic, they used to be more active. They used to be more energetic. They used to be more enthusiastic, but it's, it's waned over this time. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, again, it comes back to the external uh, gratification, the external motivation, the external information, right? Where there's far too much information that we're never going to digest and it's hard, hardly any of it's going to be applicable to where we are right now, right? So taking that time to just be slightly curious, take that time to build an internal awareness to how do I feel on these foods? What allows me to show up better? And let's just extend that uh, that that anchor point a little bit so that I'm not trying to be uh, make myself feel good in five minutes. I'm trying to make sure I feel good in two hours or two days, right? And I'm taking that time to just extend that signpost a little bit to take the time to what's going to make me feel better. Because I think the uh, continual battle that we're always faced is going to be that that comfort, right? We're going to live in a microwave culture. We're going to have everything there mm -hmm. now, all right? So taking that time to just get a little bit uncomfortable, take that time to make those small changes or simply note down and see those patterns that come up in your life that cause the lows, cause the, the, the energy slumps, cause you to know, not feel as mentally sharp and just create that space so that you can actually hear a lot of the internal signals that, that are there, all right? What we're trying to do with our nutrition focus is building a skill set so you know how to eat, right? Keto could work for two months, right? Seasonal, but it's not going to work a lifetime. And realizing that what you ate when you were 20 to when you were 40 is entirely different, all right? You're going to be working with an entirely new biology. So taking that time to build that base, when you wake up and you feel like you're being hit by a truck, don't train that day. <laughs> Take a time to go for a walk, do a stretch and make those small changes to feel like you're still showing up for you because it's going to be a spectrum of what amount of challenge you really need on that day. If you're just hard headed and you go into it with, I need to train because it's a Monday, you're going to break yourself down more than you're going to help you. If you're always in comfort driven mode and you're going to pull up the sheets for the next 20 minutes, then you're not going to create any space to move forward either, right? So it's just finding that and being truthful to how I'm going to show up better in two days or two hours rather than how I'm going to feel great in the next two minutes. Yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice because as you were said, like the microwave culture, I call it the shortcut culture we live in where everything is yep. supposed to be easy and quick and uh, instant and you should be able to pull up an app on your phone that should do it all for you. Uh, yep. and, and, it, and it does require, and I also like what you just said there about taking each day differently. Like if you wake up at a particular day and you normally do in a really intense workout but you're you're just not up to it that day to to do something else i mean abandon it completely but do something else but not force yourself i mean there are times we have to force myself i'm like that sometimes to be honest i always feel great when i come back from the thing sometimes i don't yes. want to go but i always as i was saying to my wife earlier you know it's funny how Sometimes you don't want to go to like we were boxing at lunchtime, like sometimes and it's Monday, it's lunchtime, not really feeling like going, but you go and you always feel great for having gone. You never regret going. That's the thing. You never regret actually doing something. You always regret not doing something. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, we talked about this. Uh, a lot around the, uh, I think a great example is the cold shower or right diving into a cold mm. bath is you really don't want to do it, but you feel pretty good afterwards. So taking that time to, it is a fine balance, right? Sometimes it's uh, checking yourself, is that an emotional decision or is that going to be logical long-term, right? If it's going to inhibit me to perform today, then it should be a logical decision to not do it. If it's it's cold outside and it's raining, that's an emotional decision. Let's make sure mm -hmm. we move your ass, yeah. right? So taking that time to make that change is a really great place. But I think one of the uh, unique conversations that we're trying to have here is the people that we connect with are already driven, right? They already want to get the most out of the day. They're in a position that they're trying to elevate their performance. But a lot of time we're in this culture of, you know, hashtag crushed it. We need to make sure we get the most out. We need another coffee, another pre-workout just to get something done. If we're not taking that time to realize we're fighting against our body to get more out of the day, you know, go slower to go faster, the yin and the yang, we're taking that time to emphasize a little bit more on the recovery rather than so much on the go. Yeah, no, that's a great point. It's like putting rocket fuel in your car if it's not uh, if it's not meant to take rocket fuel or it's not up to it at that point. Um, well, listen, yeah, Ollie, this has been uh, great. All of Ollie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a bit more about you and the Meta Project. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, the biggest conversation today, I've really enjoyed it, John, is just how we help help high performers, high performers and high functioning humans function at a higher level, right? Really make sure that they're working with their body rather than against it. The big shift is trying to make sure that we're building the body up rather than breaking it down with another diet. So taking that time to build that skill set and realize what are those anchors, what are those health anchors holding you back is really the goal. So building it up is not just nutrition. It's how your body's interacting with that so you can show up and really show up as your best, right? So um, it's just getting that, changing the conversation so it's not a diet it's not another anchor and another quick fix it's learning your biology and making sure that long term well into your 60s 70s you're in a position that you can still still feel and function at your highest and you never feel like the best years you're behind you right that's one of the biggest conversations you brought up before is we feel like ah well i think i've flogged too long <laughs> it's not <laughs> a great position anymore i need to take that time to build that body back up so that's really that conversation we're trying to change yeah and i mean and i can and i'm I, i'm slightly older than you i'm pretty sure um, probably a lot older than you, but I mean, I can attest to, I, I honestly, I think I'm probably one of the fittest I've ever been. So it's, uh, it, it, it's never too late. Uh, it's never too late. And, and with people like yourself and programs like yourself to help people, I would really, really encourage, encourage people to check out Ollie and check out the Meta Project because, um, you know, from a mental health perspective alone, getting yourself, getting everything together and getting more energy and being, you know, getting better performance, all of that stuff. I mean, it really will help kind of clear your mind. And we live in a culture where this your mind's cluttered with so much nonsense that I think anything you do that's positive in that, in that direction is, is a very good thing. Yeah. All right. Well, um, listen, thanks again, Ollie. Thank you for watching and listening. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah.